we've got about 45 minutes to an hour-ish that I'm going to ask them a few questions, but also I, I want you guys to formulate some questions. So begin to write a few questions down now that you might want to ask them. And here's the topic of this conversation. It's going to revolve around marketing, but also I want it to revolve around the idea of being an influencer because how many of you guys agree that all of these guys are influencers? Yes or yes? You have to have the ability to influence others, your prospects, the people in your organization, and most of all, yourself. Who gets that? Yes? yes. Awesome. So thanks for being here, guys. This is, this is so freaking cool, by the way. I never, like, this started with a, a, an, an idea, and here it is. I just have to take a second to absorb it, because you guys are freaking awesome. Okay. So here's the first question I want to ask you guys is, what even is an influencer mean today? I'll ask, I'll ask you, Danny. What does an even influencer mean today? Let's use that mic, too, when you, think, when you say it. Yeah, I don't know and I don't care, to be honest with you. So when you think about influencing, persuading. Uh, okay, yeah. If I think about influencing, it's somebody who's done something and wants to help other people do something. So at first, it's about... You've got to do something. Yeah, you have, to, you have to do something of significance. Okay, so let's look at real estate, right? Like when we're talking to a real estate salesperson, how do we influence our network, our, our database, our past clients, our sphere of influence? You know, that's, it's funny you mentioned that. I think that's the thing that separates, you know, top producers from everybody else. Uh, most people are focused on the deal, and when the deal closes, uh, the, the, the relationship closes. And I think if you really, really look at the people who build an actual business within this industry, they have a database. It's a large database. Uh, they actually end up building a community. That's what we teach some of our, our biggest clients is to build a community uh, and a following. Because when you do that, it's like you have an army of people who are out working on your behalf to tell your story for you. So... Very important. So then it sounds like the idea is I, I, I get my story down and then I train an army of people to tell my story to other people. Well, I think it's you get your results down first. Okay. And then through your results, a story is created that inspires other people. And then through your leadership and service, other people gravitate towards you and then they go out and share that story. But none of it happens without results. Awesome. Cool. How about you, Ricky? What do you have to say on that? I think it is, um, it comes from working so hard uh, at something that you actually, like Danny said, create something of significance. And then through that, you build a platform, regardless of what the platform is. It could be anything. Like, for example, real estate business for me, my platform, I didn't realize it, but I was building my brand, my personal brand through my email. I didn't understand the concept of personal brand. I didn't understand the concept of a platform or influencer uh, of any of, at all, like I do today. Um, but that's literally what I was doing. And if I look back and I realize what I was doing, I can say to myself, I was literally influencing the the buyers and sellers in my market. That I was an honest, trustworthy, hardworking, professional, consistent, dependable agent. And through that, I influence them to use me as their agent for the rest of their life. And it's the same thing with any industry, real estate coaching, um, you know, sports, whatever it is. You've worked hard to achieve something, which then in turn created a platform that now you can use however you want to use. Some people use it for good. Some people use it for bad. It's not always to help people. So... If you do get to the point where you do build a platform, you have done something of significance, um, be, you know, be grateful for it and use it in the right way. And just know that if, when you get to the point where you, you can influence, you know, do good um, and help people. Cool. Here's a question for, for BC. How important is social media in building your brand today? Man, it's... It's something that I still feel a lot of people undervalue. You know, when I started making videos years ago, I kind of had the vision and said, look, video's the future, right? People, like, you can go and do a video on YouTube right now, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, 
I mean, Twitter, whatever it is, and it's free. Whereas 20 years ago, if somebody wanted to get discovered in Hollywood or build a brand, they literally had to have the right connections, get lucky, or meet that perfect person that would then put that platform behind them. Now, you can create it yourself in whatever niche you want with just hard work and consistency. And what it's been able to do is just incredible. You know, it, it's really surpassed anything that I thought would be possible, not only for my business, but my personal brand. And I think where a lot of people also get stuck is, you can morph beyond whatever niche you start in, right? And that's really what I'm, I'm really looking to push barriers now with my brand and just get out of just real estate. And I have been for years because I see the potential in it. And it, it's global and people don't realize that you think only five people are watching your videos or only people in your city, but the reach that you have is incredible. I'm getting messages from Indonesia, Australia, you know, parts of Asia. It's just insane, the people that are messaging me that I'm getting out to when I never thought that was even possible. So you can really just build a huge global platform for your brand to be known. Shit, I already got recognized here twice in Dallas since I've been here, and I've never been to Dallas. It's incredible. So how many of you guys got our postcard in the mail that we sent to you guys about this event? None of you got my postcard? Because we didn't send one, but you probably saw it on Instagram, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm not saying don't send postcards, we do in our real estate business. But digital technology isn't the future, it's the now. I can get a video of you, even if I pay to boost it and I target it for 10 cents, where it's 34 cents at best to send that postcard for a six second view that gets thrown away, okay? So BC, you got about 170,000 YouTube followers now? I'm guessing, uh, I don't know. 140. 140,000 YouTube followers now. Uh, Danny, you got like 115,000 Instagram followers, something like that. And this takes like time, effort, energy, and a lot of work to do that, though, to get that, right? BC, what are some of the, th the victories that have come out of building your brand through YouTube? Man, so many. Uh, well, first of all, the agent-to-agent -agent referral network is tremendous. I mean, we're sending out and receiving so many referrals now, I can't even keep track, right? It's just incredible. And I think that's one of the most underlooked benefits of growing your brand. Uh, but like Danny said, and I love that he said it, it has to be based on results. So anytime we've been sent referrals, we've done a good job. As when we sent them out, we make sure that we send them out to the right people. And that's really what helps build your brand even more. Um, outside of that, it's given me opportunities to morph, again, outside of being a real estate salesperson. For example, how many of you in the audience have maybe a goal five or 10 or 15 years from now to do something else, right? Maybe be a speaker or something like that. You don't have to raise your hands, but you may have aspirations outside of this, this industry. This gives you that opportunity. I've met incredible people through the car community. I'm a huge car guy. I know all the people who put together the Fast and Furious movie, and I can call them and we can go out and have a coffee. It's, it's crazy. So outside of even just real estate, the opportunities are, are endless and boundless, and I still think people don't, they're, they're thinking too small when it comes to this. And when I started in 2013 and 14, I already saw what's happening now, even this moment, way back then. And didn't you pick up like a $4 million deal or something from Am I making this up? You're, 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 yeah, we have it under contract right now in Laguna Beach, a uh, new construction that we did, found it off market. I got the client actually through YouTube because uh, an agent who follows me in Indiana met him. She sold his mom's house, then he moved to Laguna, and she said, oh, you're moving to Laguna, you gotta go talk to Brian. And what's your commission on that deal? Uh, $145,000. $145,000. Give him a hand for that one, guys. So here's, here's a question for anyone that wants to answer it on the panel. Do we as real estate agents actually need to be involved in social media today? Is it important as real estate, for real estate agents to do that? What do you guys think? Yes. <laughs> Jason says yes. Tell us why, Jason. I mean, it's just one of those things that isn't going anywhere. And no matter how people try to be resistant or or just going against the grain, like it's, it's not going anywhere. And you're always gonna have that feeling on your shoulder and in your head that I need to be doing this, I need to be doing this, I need to update this, I need to you know, fix this. And it's just gonna wear you down because you're not doing anything because you're trying to you know, just be different from everybody. But I feel like not only are clients looking more at things, um, other agents are, and, and it's, it's helped me in my business. I mean, even just attracting agents to the team and the things that we're going out and doing, you know, people are proud to say like, hey, this is what we do. Check out our page, check out this and that. And, and homeowners and clients, they, they really like that, so. 
It's, cool. It's like, why not? It's free. Right, Danny. So <clears throat> I, I feel like this is a question that was asked like five years ago. And I feel like there's something wrong if we're still asking it. And the reality is, is that if, if we're still asking this question and you're still not on social media, then I think you need to tackle the underlying reason why you're not on social media. And that's, a, I don't, it's, a, it's an issue of self is what it really is. It's the way you see yourself. Something is wrong with the way you see yourself in that you constantly talk yourself out of putting yourself out there. And I think that's the real issue. Um, and, I, and I would help you with that. It's, it's like, I, I'll never forget, I had a conversation with a friend of mine and a friend of mine said, you know, I grew up with the thought that all salespeople were like uh, snake oil salespeople, whatever, whatever that saying is, whatever the case may be. So he said, I, I had a negative thought about what it meant to be a salesperson. And I go, great, so let's create a positive thought. I said, uh, are you providing a great service for people? Well, yeah, I am. Are you helping people and changing their destiny? Well, yeah, I am. Are you helping them accomplish their goals? I guess I am. Are you truthful, honest, and hardworking? Well, yeah, I guess I am then what's wrong with any of that? Well, nothing. And is it okay if you get compensated for that? I never, guess I never saw it that way. So I would just challenge all of you and with this thought that perspective is everything. Perspective is everything. If you're still having an issue with social media, maybe it's your perspective that is off. Maybe you're so focused about messing up, or maybe you're so focused about not doing it the right way, or maybe you're so focused on starting and starting off the, right tr the wrong track. I, I would just tell you, change your perspective a little bit. I would just tell you, look at the positive in it. I would tell you, if you do mess up, so what? Just keep going. I would tell you that if you're not on social media, there could be a lot of great people that are missing out on the ability to work with you compared to the competition. And I would tell you that if you're in your seat, and you can answer yes to the questions, are you good, are you hardworking, are you honest, do you care about your clients, then more people need to know about you than less. Awesome. Anyone else, Ricky or BC? I think it's just about uh, spreading your message, staying in front of people, you know, to build your brand and to build a business in today's world forever, you have to be in front of people, as many people as you can be. And social media gives us this amazing opportunity to be in front of more people than ever before for the cheapest price. And, and, and that's, if, that's if you pay for it. I mean, you could do it for free. You, just, you can just post and it's gonna reach a lot of people for nothing. And I think it's incredible. And if you're not doing it, like Danny said, it is absolutely the perspective that you have and or that you're just too lazy to start for whatever reason or you're making excuses or you think that you should do this. This is more important than, than social media. Because a lot of people think the time they spend on social media, they're not making any money. Or the time they answer messages on social media, they're not, they're not making any money right then. You have to sacrifice that work to engage with your audience for, for brand. It, th th we're in a world of personal brand, and it's growing more and more every day. Your personal brand is what's going to separate you from all the other agents and social media is the gateway. So if, if, if you're doing 30 deals a year uh, or less, where should you start with social media and how much time should you do that versus prospecting, having conversations? Who wants to answer that question? I would say focus all your energy on getting listings. I would say use buyers only as a means of survival. I would say that on social media, you simply go out there and you put what you're doing when you're servicing listings and you're servicing buyers. And I would say you can do it with something as simple as one post a day. Uh, and I would say that if you do one post a day, make three posts about business, two posts about your personal life. There it is. Perfect. Simple. Who else? Anyone else want to answer that? Yeah, I can add. You guys have to make it a priority. Is it in your schedule? That's the first question I ask everybody who's like, oh, I want to do more on social media. The moment it's a priority, it's in your schedule, it doesn't take that long. What, he, what Danny just described would probably take you 20, 30 minutes if you really did it. That's it, if that. 
So again, he said it, it's a self issue, but it has to become a priority and you have to say, okay, I'm gonna tackle this thing, just like you do your prospecting or anything else. When that switch flips, now you roll into it and it becomes a part of you and you just do it. But until then, you're always gonna be on the fence and that's the worst place to be in because he's right. I've been getting asked that question for the last five or six years and I'm like, why are we still asking this question? Yeah. Awesome. Anyone else want to answer that? I just want to say something right quick um, because you pointed out about having like 30 deals or less and I realized for a lot of agents that I speak with, the reason why they don't do a lot on social media is because they feel like they don't have a lot to put out there. Um, and my advice to that would be to get really good at repurposing. So if you have a home, let's just say you have 20 pictures on there, that's gonna give you at least five different posts that you can post different parts of the home out there. You can create a blog post about the home. You can take quotes out of your blog post that you're saying how amazing this home is and turn those into quote images. You can record audio, you can record video, you can take one home and create so many different posts from it so that it can give off that, I'm super active on social media, I have a lot going on, and let that attract more and more listings for you by other homeowners seeing the way that you're marketing. Awesome, thanks. Maybe the problem is, is that, that you don't understand what good content is and what bad content is, and you're scared to post because you don't know if it's good or bad. And really the only way to know is to start posting and see what people like. It's a process. You're not going to all of a sudden have the best content out there the first time you post or after a week or after a month. It takes time to learn what works and what doesn't work. It's just like making calls. Or, or, or for example, you know, if you have 100 followers you know, and you're, you're worried about the, the level of your content, if it's good or bad, well, to me, <clears throat> my advice is, is to post more content and figure it out because in your mind, you want to get to 5,000 followers, 10,000 followers. The 9,900 9, 9, people there, because you got 100 now, there's 9,900 people that are going to follow you in your mind that aren't going to see this content that you're posting today. Think of every time you post as practice and you're collecting data for yourself to learn what's good and what's bad and get better as you go and tweak it. And you get to a place where now you have 1,000 followers, your content's pretty good. Okay, now we're at 5,000 and it's even better. Or 10,000, now it's even better than it was before. And you just continue to get better. So please don't not use social media because you're worried about the quality of your content. Because you don't know what's good or bad yet. How can agents keep from being distracted by all the noise on social media and still do this? What's, what's the best way to keep from being distracted? I think the best way is, and the way I handle it is, is, is I, I literally look, I, I look at my feed very little. I'm there to, to post what I'm trying to post and to collect data for what's working and what's not working. I'm using it as a tool. I'm not using it as a way to pass time and see what's going on with everybody else. Anyone else? Well, like I said earlier, it has to be, you have to be strategic with it. Because many, many people, especially real estate agents, will be, okay, I got a prospect, I'm gonna set up my door knocking time, this is my window for appointments, I'm gonna cold call. But they don't do the same thing with social media. Just like Ricky said, they're too busy scrolling, kind of like Colton is right now on his phone. And <laughs> <laughs> I got the questions, hey, hey. How many of you have iPhones here, by the way? How many of you have iPhones? Raise your hand. Okay, There's, if you go into the settings, you can look at your usage. Take a look at that number and you'll be shocked. You'll probably, you'll be so surprised. You'll see that you're spending eight hours on your phone. And then think, how much of that eight hours was actually spent creating content versus consuming it? That's where the switch needs to be made. But until you look at that graph and you see that reality, you won't know because you're just casually, unconsciously looking at your phone all day. Best thing I ever did was go to the settings and turn off all notifications. Especially when I was prospecting, I just turned my phone off. If I was door knocking, maybe I used my phone to get somebody's number, that's it. I wasn't scrolling, I wasn't on Instagram, I wasn't on Facebook, that's it. But you have to take these, these types of measures in order for you to really take this thing to the next level. But it doesn't take that much time, guys. I guarantee you if all of you commit to doing one video a week or one a day to start, it'll take you 15 minutes. You just have to write it down and do it. Right here. Yeah, <clears throat> this one you're not gonna like. Um, 
I would say you need to be really, really clear with how important eliminating drama is and eliminating drama people from your life. I'll give you two perfect examples. Number one, getting sick. People who do not feel validated in life and people who do not feel like they have enough attention and people who struggle with self-worth issues will find any reason to get attention. And the biggest reason right now is social media is getting sick. If you really, really think about it, it's like everybody wants to post a picture of themselves or somebody in the hospital or somebody's sick or can you please pray for me or can you please... I mean, there's plenty of people in my life that I'm sure are sick. And there's no reason for me to be posting that anywhere. There's just none. Because all I'm doing is I'm infecting everybody with like the thought of getting sick. Do you guys understand what I'm telling you? And so what you need to do is you need to put a cold, hard stop to that. Because that's just sucking you into somebody else's drama. The second thing, especially in real estate offices, we do such a great job at celebrating such small milestones. I got a listing and I made a sale and blah, 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 blah. That is different than congratulations to the so-and-so family. The so-and-so family just moved or the so-and-so family just did this. Look at a major league baseball player. A major league baseball player, when they get a big hit, a base hit, doesn't celebrate. Heck, half the time when they get a home run, they don't celebrate. Why? Because they realize it's part of the job. Whatever you're celebrating in life, I want you to understand that there's a direct correlation with what you're celebrating and what your ceiling is for you, what you think is possible in your life. So if you're celebrating like it's the last thing on earth or the greatest thing on earth, the fact that you just got a listing, then you're probably not used to getting a lot of listings. If you want to start taking a lot of listings, you want to start working with a lot of people, just make it part of daily routine. And then the final thing, number three, is for real estate agents, everybody does this when somebody changes offices. I like to make an announcement. I move to so-and-so office. Who gives a shit? Get to work. <laughs> and then what do we do? We do what's worse. Oh, my God, thank you. Oh, you're going to be good wherever you go. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Get to work. What is your message for your brand now that you guys are delivering to your community? <laughs> we love some old Danny here and there. <laughs> so when you look at the message you want, like for, for Ricky or for Danny or BC or Chasten, what do you want to be, what, what are you trying to communicate to the people that you're out sending the message to? Y'all nervous, huh? I think I'm trying to communicate that I want the public image of real estate agents, I want that bar to go up. I want the public to view us uh, differently, you know, not as someone just trying to get a deal. My message is to try to help agents succeed through how I built my business, through creating relationships and not high pressuring people into deals. and and with that, reducing the failure rate in the real estate industry because it's so high. And I think real estate is so simple. And it's simple because it's easy. The problem is the work and the process that, like Danny says, everyone's trying to bypass. Everybody's trying to bypass that part. And I'm trying to bring to realization through, it, through me, you guys watching me, how I do my business, I work, I'm in the trenches. I'm selling 100 properties a year because I'm, I'm getting after it. And I want, I want the real estate industry as a whole to follow my lead and understand that we have to go through this process. And through that, less agents will fail. I think my brand message and the messaging that we're putting out right now is more so from a work standpoint, showing the actual work side of real estate. And it's very unfortunate, but there's a lot of people that think as real estate agents, we don't, we don't work. They think that we make quick and easy money. And you know, sometimes that can be the case, but there's a tremendous amount of work that has to go on if you want to last in this business. And so shifting our branding and our, our messaging to, sh to show us like rehearsing and to, to show us studying and learning new negotiation tactics and, and just, just really putting that out there is, is what I think the goal is these days 
Um, you know, and it's, and it's been helpful from an, from an standpoint of me being an agent and on YouTube and, you know, creating videos for other agents, but then also from the public because we're young and we don't necessarily look like the typical, what people think is a real estate agent is supposed to look like. We may not talk like it, but we're, we're out here and we're grinding and, and we're learning and, and we're, we're truly helping people. And so that's something that I, I really like seeing happening with our message and what we're putting out there. Awesome. Anyone else? Um, well, with me, I would say, because I think I've been probably doing it the longest out of everybody here, I would assume, five or six years. In the beginning, it was more me sharing my journey and showing people what it was really like for somebody new and young in the real estate industry to get their business going, the door knocking, the cold calling, and all the hard work that we never saw. All we saw was million dollar listing and showing up in a fancy suit and negotiating a $300,000 commission over the phone in two minutes. So I think a lot of people got jaded with that, and I just showed the hard work, live calls, FISBO calls, expired calls. So it was really just, this is what it's like. Now, as I've matured, gotten more results, and developed as a human being, I have two focuses now on the individual level for people, inner game and communication. That's it. I feel at the individual level, if I'm able to influence people's inner game and make it stronger and up their ability to communicate, not only with themselves but with other people, everything else will fall into place. So that's been my absolute hard-nosed focus for the last year, year and a half, and moving forward. So we're going to ask some questions from you guys, so make sure you have some written down. We'll have some mics come out to you. Because I have one more thing I want to ask, and it's not really around uh, the marketing and the branding but where the message comes from, and BC touched on it with the inner game, how important is it on you creating that self-approval and that self-love and that self-validation from the inside out and living and working from that space? Yeah, so I think this is big, and I'm, and I'm gonna give you a, a real world example. I'm not gonna point anybody out, but I would say it's more than just self-love. I would say it's also self-clarity. Because I think for a lot of us in the room, if we're not succeeding at the level that we're succeeding at, we are overcomplicating things way, way too much. Uh, I'm going I'm to give you a perfect example. I met an individual uh, who is, you know, struggling right now. And as I'm asking questions, so what's up, what's going on, whatever the case may be, uh, first thing that came out of his mouth was, oh, the government. Well, what about the government? Oh, you just, you just got to be careful with the government. <laughs> Well, what, what the hell's wrong with the government? Well, you know, with all the new, you know, uh, 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 sanctities that they're putting on, on small business and so forth and so on and on guns and, and you know, on vaccinations and everything, you just got to be careful with them. I go, wait a minute, but you're broke right now. You don't even have a business. <laughs> Do you have any kids? No. So then why should the vaccinations matter to you? <laughs> Do you have any property? No. So then, so then what do you have to protect? So you see what I'm saying is, and then I had to help that person look at the fact that, look, you're just focused on the wrong thing. You're putting so much energy and so much emphasis on the wrong thing that that's why you're at where you're at financially. Because you see, that type of mindset, and I want to teach you something, that type of mindset is a mindset that is constantly looking for what's wrong. And you need to start looking for what's right, what's simple, what's easy. So then the second question was, I noticed the individual had a, a little bit of a beat up car. And I said, what's up? When are you going to fix this? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I just, I've never made that much money. I have this plan, so forth and so on. And, and you know, I, but it's going to be a lot of money and this and that. And I go, dude, like you can go get a Honda Accord that actually drives and the door works for like 2,000 bucks down and 200 bucks a month or something. You can go do that like tomorrow if you wanted to. Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm in a new area, and then I just came from the other area, and I moved out of the other area. Why the hell did you move out of the other area? Because the government has taken over the other area. Whoa, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Okay, so tell me right now, where are you going to live? I'm going to live right there. Perfect. Do you have a real estate license? Yes, I do. Perfect. Here's the plan. I want you to prospect four hours a day and host, host two open houses a week. Whoa, but I don't do open houses because my coach told me, no, 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 no. You can't even afford a coach right now. Right now, you have to do all of the above. Everything, whatever it takes. You have to prospect. You got to go twirl signs. You got to do open house because you're broke and you have a shitty car that the door doesn't work. You need to fix that. 
See, and if you fix that, you will reinforce your self-belief in yourself. Every moment that you're in the shitty car where the door doesn't work, you're reinforcing a story. And it's the wrong story. If you just start focusing on how to clarify your mind and how to make things simple. Everybody say simple. simple. There's people walking outside right now that could buy a house or sell a house from you. That's how simple it is. If you can make it simple and just say for me to buy a car, for me to do whatever the case it is, I need to go find five deals. Great. What's stopping you from doing those five deals in the next 30 days? It's only one thing. It's the fact that you think it's complicated. That's it. You think it takes you a year to go find those five deals. The best of the best think that it'll take them literally a week to go find those five deals. Simplify it. That's what I would say. In 2012, I sold 52 homes driving a 2001 No Fear Cavalier that looked like shit. So anything is possible. <laughs> Anyone else want to answer about that on the inner game aspect before we move on? We're good? Okay. Who has a question? Raise your hand. So let's uh, get a mic up here for Rafael up in the front. Go ahead and say your name and where you're from. Uh, Rafael from New York. Say, hey, Rafael from New York. Hey, Rafael from New York. Uh, Who, Danny. Who's, your, who's your question for? Uh, Danny. Okay. So uh, I see you're a big mindset guy, and that's probably one of the biggest things uh, that's one of, one of the biggest takeaways uh, from the summit, which is, you know, we have to improve our mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, going into real estate, what exactly was that main uh, limiting beliefs that you felt like was holding you back before you had that breakthrough, like, I could really do this? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. First off, I got to give Brian credit because that's what I focus on too. That, that ultimately, it, it, it is what it is. It's the inner game and communication. That's it. That's all you really should be working on. I'm going to be honest with you. When I first got into real estate, that first year I closed 28 deals. I didn't have any limiting beliefs. I really didn't. I just focused on what was wrong in my life and what I wanted to fix. If I had limiting beliefs, I wouldn't be here where I'm at today. So I'm going to ask you to simplify it this way. Tell me one thing you desperately want to change about your life right now. What is it? One thing you don't like. Uh, my finances, of Okay, course. beautiful. Give, give me clarity. Give me clarity. What would that look like for you? How much money would it take for you to make in the next 12 months for you to feel like finances is in a good place? What's the number? Uh, 200 grand. 200 grand. Okay, what does it cost you to live right now? Uh, a month. A month? Uh, $2,500. $2, okay, so this is a perfect example. Does he need 200 grand, yes or no? You don't need 200 grand. You're trying to set a goal for yourself that is unreachable. Here's what I would say. Why don't you go make 100 grand? If you make 100 grand, it costs you three grand a month to live. That's $36,000 a year. Yes or no? Yes. If you were to make $100,000, wouldn't you be one of the top earners in your entire family? Yes or no? Yes. Wouldn't that give you $75,000 in excess of money? Yes or no? Yes. I know the tax rates, you're probably end up paying 20 grand in taxes. That'll give you $50,000 that you can put in the bank. Yes or no? Yes. Wouldn't you feel financially free if you had $50,000 in the bank? Of course. Perfect. What's your average commission check? Uh, about 7,500. About 7,500. So how many deals do you need in order to go make $100,000? What's the number? Uh, 12? Yeah, about 13, 14 deals. 13 deals. Isn't that one a month? So what if all you did from now till you made 100 grand in a year, because this is how complicated you guys make it. I close one deal a month. 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 I close one. And you brainwash yourself to believe that you close one deal a month, one deal a month, one deal a month, one deal a month. I don't want you talking to anybody. I don't want you thinking about anything. I don't want you looking at anything. I don't want you writing anything. I don't want you writing goals. I don't want you writing a 10-year fucking plan. I don't want you doing anything. I close one deal a month. 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 That's all you need to be worried about right now. Can I tell you why? Say yes. Uh, yes. Because if you close one, then what else? Guess, guess what's next? I close two deals a month. 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 But you ain't never going to close two if you first can't master closing 
Give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Who else has a question? Raise your hand. Go ahead and stand up here in the back. Okay, my question's for Ricky. Wait, say your name first. Alexis. Where I'm are you from, from Wichita Alexis? Falls, Texas. Awesome. Say, hey, Alexis. Okay. Hey, Alexis. Who's Hi, your guys. question for? Ricky. Go ahead. Okay, so concerning your weekly emails, um, I guess this could go for all social media, but in particular when I'm doing my emails every week, yeah. the one thing that I am running into a problem with is creating original content that I feel like I'm keeping my clients engaged and they want to continue opening up my email. Um, I want to keep it on brand with who I am. Yeah. What do you do or what types of things do you put in your emails to keep it so that it's not the same thing every week and you're keeping it fun and exciting for your clients? Yeah, um, well for one, you can go and look at all my emails too. Uh, all the past emails on my Facebook business page, Ricky Carutha, Remax of Orange Beach, I post every one of them there forever. So you can go there and you can actually click on every single one of them and look at them, okay? Um, but to answer your question, every email has a, a big picture at the top of the beach or something in my market, and it's always different. And so the first thing they see when they open up the email is something different every time, okay? And then they scroll down, then there's links. There's links to the new listings for the last two weeks, closed sales, you can search property, and then there's a webcam, a live cam, okay? Then I have two columns. One column is everything for sale. It goes to the different links in my area. I have three different subcategories of areas, so they can click on that. It goes to my a web page that shows them all the complexes, all the subdivisions. They click anywhere they want to see what's for sale in those different places. The right column is, is what I spend the most time on each week besides the, the picture at the top, and this is where I may talk about square foot prices this year compared to last year. Or I may talk about, you know, tourism up or an event in the area or what I think about the market or something I see or I showed a buy or something and this is what happened. Um, and so that, that is where I can throw little pieces of my personality in there in that little area. On top of the fact that they, they know that I'm changing everything around, different pictures, different, different content. Um, someone asked me earlier about my email because I had an article uh, about um, how there were 10% more rooms booked last year to this year. It was because the sports tourism went up, way up in my area year over year. And she said, where did you get that information? I literally Googled my, my area, Orange Beach, and hit and click news, and then all these articles pop up. Then you read through them and find something very interesting, right? So you can do that one week. You can evaluate the market this year compared to last year. So you're always switching it up where you have the analytical people. They get what they want. And the people that want to know about, you know, different things, it's all there. So when people open up my email, the reason I'm able to retain and have such a great open rate is because it gives you a little bit of everything. So some people open it up because they want to see what that picture is going to be. They literally just want to see what the new picture is going to be. Or they want to know what the new listings are for the last week. Or the, pin, the closed deals in their subdivision. They check it every week. And so there's, a, there's a little, little pieces of different things where I can capture a, a real diverse audience. You know, I, I can retain a very diverse audience with one email. And that scales my business and makes my business efficient because I send one thing to my entire database and, and it captures everyone. So I think the creating, creating it every week is a big, huge thing for me because that, that creates the retention because it's nothing they've ever seen before. When you do the drip campaigns where four realtors have sent it out to the same person on the same day at the same time and you know, they see your name, that's actually hurting your personal brand. Because they just they saw, they see they saw that four e, four agents sent it to them at the same time the same email, um, you know the drip campaign type. Uh, they 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 can be utilized and be effective, but this is just something that's worked for me, so I hope that helps. Awesome, give me a hand. <laughs> Who else has a question for one of these guys? Go ahead and go ahead and stand up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, say your name, where you're from. Hi, I'm Sarah Evans from Boca Raton, Florida. Say, and I hi, have... Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Sarah. And I have a question for Danny. 
I believe ego is a huge problem with a lot of real estate agents. And it wasn't until you mentioned it this morning that I realized that that's one of my problems. So what's the best advice to get over the ego problem? Oof. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Um, I would say there's two options. Number one, um, either God's going to do something to, to rip it out of you. And that, and that I, don't, I don't wish on anybody. Uh, but number two, those are things that you could start working on yourself. Um, I mean, I, I'm not ashamed to admit for me, the, the greatest thing that could help you get spiritually connected like that is a journey with ayahuasca. That's what I would look into. Who? Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Yeah, it's a, it's a vine from the Amazon jungle. Oh, okay. And it's in a ceremony. Just look it up. So ayahuasca. And if you can combine that with meditation and uh, really, quite frankly, just the fact that you're aware of the fact that it's an issue, then slowly start to work on it. Slowly start to work on it, you know? Okay. And you'll catch it. You'll catch it when it shows up. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Tomorrow night, too, with uh, our speaker. Oh, and the breath work is going to be, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Beautiful. Okay, so with the breath work we're going to do tomorrow night is, is the quickest, easiest way without having to, if, if you can't have access to ayahuasca, it, to, to go to this place to rip out that space of your ego and your identity. Here's, here's the reality is people with the biggest ego are the ones with the biggest um, self-doubt and lack of self-love, okay? Because they're trying to create this facade of the imposter syndrome, I'm better than I really am. And so they'll, they'll, they'll make the image that they're better than they really are. Does that mean? Yeah. Fuck fake it till but, you make it. Face it till you make yeah, it. Yeah, and I would say for all of us, the ego is always going to be there. It's always going to be a part of our lives. Um, and I would just say that the ego shows up in a lot of different ways. You know, for, for me, it showed up in that I needed success to validate me and to have people accept me. But for other people, it could show up in that it keeps them in a box and it doesn't let them do a video for the first time on social media. That's ego. I would say for everybody, uh, just look at how you talk yourself out of or into situations that don't serve love, happiness, prosperity for everybody around you. Can I give you an, a, a, an honest, very vulnerable example? The previous me would have never done a panel before because I was too good for a panel. And I was sitting here, literally, no, true story. I was sitting here, sitting here thinking, dude, you've come a long way. Like, you wouldn't have done this before. And like, and now I want to learn from these guys and grow with these guys. But the previous me, no way. I would have never had done it. So. Awesome. And they are telling me, Danny, you need to go to the airport. I got time for one more. Okay, cool. Go ahead and stand up. Wait, let's get you a mic real quick. Say your name and where you're from. Jose from New York. Say, what's up, Jose? What's up? Who's your Hold question? on, Jose, can I coach you real fast? Yeah, what's up? Grab your hand, put it up in the air. Everybody do the same thing. Grab your hand, put it up in the air. Say, Jose from New York. Jose, Jose from New York. York. Yeah, not Jose from New York. <laughs> Jose from New York. Say it. Jose from New York. Yeah, confidence. Yeah. If, you, if, if there's one thing you want to have confidence in is in your name and yourself. Cool. So what we are taught to do right, is, is, to, is to doubt. So we'll say, Jose from New York, like, I don't know if it's really me or not. <laughs> yeah. It's you, dude. Own it. Yeah? Okay. So it's me. So I had a question maybe for all of you guys. So it's kind of based on her question. How can you use your ego to boost yourself or in a good way? Is there such a way where maybe you can use that ego to kind of drive your business up or your personal development, anything like that? Well, I don't know. I understand what you're trying to say. I, I, I think we all need to be aware of the fact that there's, there's two forces living inside of us, and that's the ego and our, our true authentic self. And so, like we were talking at lunch, like right now, the biggest thing in the, your life right now is you want a new car. Right? Remember when we were talking at lunch? Maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I would, I'm just going to say that when I was a young man of your age, that was like the biggest deal for me as well. And then what I started to realize is why was it a big deal? It was a big deal because I had grew up for so long, you know, on welfare, not having a lot of money, living in a two-bedroom apartment, that now I wanted to show the world I had arrived. Nothing wrong with a new car. It's 
what is the force that's driving you to get it is what I'm trying to say. So I would say, instead of looking at how you can use your ego for good, I would say tap into your spirit. Tap into your true, authentic self and really understand. Like you, my man, you said, I need 200,000. I just proved to you, you don't. What you really need is 100,000 and make that your target. Does this make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So if, if, for example, like now we're talking about impacting other people, does your ego... Because I've heard there's, like, you, there's a time where you humble yourself and there's also a time where you can express mm -hmm. that ego to empower other people. I don't think it's your ego. I think it's express your heart, express yourself, express your truth, what you know. Like in other words, remember yesterday, remember earlier when I told you guys there's no way around it, you got to pay the price? Yeah. See, I know how to coach you or anybody here because I've paid the price. I don't need to rehearse for that. I don't need to practice for that. I know. I know the way the human mind works. I know how we'll try to self-sabotage and give ourselves a goal that is somewhat unreachable instead of focusing on something that we can do. I know how we can learn to distract ourselves with things that mean nothing to ourselves instead of keeping things simple in our own head. That's that inner game that he was telling you about. Yeah. It's understanding that. So I would say right now, since you're a young man, worry about mastering you your inner self, your ability to communicate, and eventually the time will come where you will have a platform to help influence other people. Be patient. Cool. Be patient, yeah. Be patient. Awesome, thanks. Over here we got, do you need to go, Danny? I'll do this one. Hold on, this for me. Go ahead and say your name, where you're from. How you doing, uh, Daniel? I'm from New York, too, but uh, uh, I live in Houston. Awesome, yeah. say what's up, Daniel, from Houston. What's up, Daniel? How you doing? This is for Brian. Um, is there a connection between um, inner game and, I know you talk a lot about NLP. Is there a connection between inner game and NLP? Or is there, can you work on one without the other? What would you say about that? It's one tool that you can use. That's what I tell people. You know, I, I've just really become a student of life. That's really, and that's been one of those things that I've learned and studied and applied to improve, we can say, my inner game. Right, right. Um, and I would say, there's so much more to it. Like one of the biggest things for me, and I'm glad this whole thing about uh, ego came up and, and serving. For me, the most radical transformation in the last year and a half and two years is just, I've really made it a goal in me to meet everybody from every walk of life. I go out where I live, I know all the store owners from the owner, manager, janitor, dishwasher, I know everybody. And that for me has been one of the most beautiful experiences I've gone through in the last couple of years because I've been able to just meet all kinds of people and I realize I'm this little speck on this little blue planet in this universe. And I know that sounds like spiritual and all that and some people they get lost with that but it just gave me a better perspective. Danny was talking about that. So now, like for example, I, I got some bad news on the way over here when I landed on a plane and somebody close to my family uh, passed away and I shed a couple tears immediately. Years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do that because I was this tough guy. Hey, I'm never going to cry. I'm this macho fucking masculine motherfucker. I never shed a tear. And even the people on the plane, like, what's wrong? I'm like, no, it's good. I, I like this. So I smiled after because I was like, look, I just shed a tear so easily. Right? That's been some of the biggest changes for me, brother, with inner game. has just been meeting people and just experiencing life. When you go through the work like you've been hearing all morning, that's your teacher. That's what's going to give you all this growth because you're going to be able to, these tools that you're learning, apply them and see them firsthand with your experience, your own subjective experience. What a lot of people do is they get a bunch of objective opinions and experiences and they never go through it themselves. That's the difference. Once that plane is crossed, then it's going to click with you and you'll realize it. However, however, you need to make sure, and I think Danny brought this up, you get rid of the negative Nancys and all the bullsh bullshitters in your life because then you're comparing yourself to that. You need to compare, compare yourself with greatness. You need to compare yourself with other people of influence and of value in your life. Those are the friendships and relationships you need to cultivate and acquire for you to get to that next level. Because then you're gonna raise the bar with everybody else. That's how you do it, brother. But it's gonna be this experience of doing it over and over that's really gonna help you blossom as an individual. That was fun. Awesome. Everyone give these guys a round of applause. Danny has got to go out, so give, give Danny a hand.